Hi, Casey with Harmony Horticultural Consulting. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about growing tall fescue, which is a cool season grass in the warm climate. Uh, now Phoenix is a very hot, um, dry climate, and our summers typically nuke our cool season grasses. But if you have shaded or heavily dense shaded areas, uh, you might be able to get tall fescue to last year round. So stick around, we'll head outside and take a look at what tall fescue looks like in, in the summer months in a shaded uh, backyard. And can I be perfectly honest with you? I've lived on this property now for 12 years and for the first six or seven years, it was really challenging to get anything to grow here. The previous homeowner had sodded uh, tall fescue, but it was still pretty patchy and hadn't been well cared for. I thought about continuing to grow tall fescue and had purchased the sun and shade mix from Home Depot for a number of years, but about uh, the end of June, which we are uh, in right now, is when it would start browning out and um, then we'd go from the end of June through um, the end of September when we would start prepping for overseeding for the winter, once again with that uh, sun and shade mix. Well, what I found out was that sun and shade mix is not a good fit if you want to grow tall fescue year round. After a few years of screwing things up in the summer months, messing with the water, fertilization, mowing heights, I realized that all that ryegrass would definitely burn out in the summer months. Monsoon would come in and we'd have all that dead organic matter for disease to thrive in um, and then invite disease to kill off the tall fescue. So the solution to the organic matter and getting rid of it was to not use those sun and shade mixes anymore, but to do 100% tall fescue and baby it through the summer months and then encourage it to grow through the cool season. But again, it's that monsoon season where we have high humidity, warm temperatures. It does start to have some disease pressure and keeping it alive. Uh, we, we tend to want to water things that are, that are stressed due to the heat and that is not the best thing to do, um, especially when um, certain uh, turf grass species are susceptible to turf diseases. So this stand of grass is going on its third summer. Uh, no additional overseeding except for uh, spotting some seeds that, um, that I needed, uh, um, some bare areas that I needed to reseed due to sprinkler head change out, things like that. But uh, this is its third summer of survival and uh, this is when it starts to look its worst. And um, I'll share some pictures with you of uh, what it looks like in August after it's been through monsoon season uh, to give you an idea of what it will look like. It's far worse. Shade should be 60% or more coverage throughout the day with less than three to four hours of direct sunlight in any one area. If there is direct sunlight for longer periods of time, you will likely need to have Bermuda grass growing side by side in those sunny areas. Remember the texture differences seen in the last video? Over the past couple years, I've realized you can't water this uh, to relieve it from drought stress or heat stress because then we invite diseases like brown patch from from um, taking over and developing in that stand of grass. Now, even if you do get some brown patches, um, brown patch uh, developing in your yard, uh, those areas typically come back in the fall and the winter months. So it's not a big deal if you can deal with the spots. Um, of course, it has to be windy today. One of the awesome things about tall fescue is it has a really deep root system go down as much as two feet in the ground. Now whether or not you have tall fescue that has roots two feet deep, that's going to be determined by your soil type and uh, your irrigation um, programming. Starting the third week of June, I'm going to be bumping my irrigation up on the tall fescue to water from every other day to uh, watering six days a week. I will also reduce that run time just slightly. So for MP rotators, I will be watering, depending on the zone, 43 minutes to 46 minutes on those um, six days a week. Now you're asking, Casey, that's a lot of water. Yes, it is a lot of water. Um, now I can tell you exactly how many gallons are going through my system because I do have the, the ratio irrigation system with a flow sensor on it so I can tell you how many gallons. And um, 
comparing MP rotators on a traditional Bermuda grass uh, lawn, which are watering a, a full exposed uh, Bermuda grass, um, I, I have mine scheduled for about 50 to 55 minutes in June. And um, so we're watering a little less, but we are running six days a week uh, just to account for that heat. In the winter months, I don't even have to water, but every three to four days. Um, and if we get a rain event, um, which sometimes it does rain in Arizona, um, then I could go even five or six days uh, between irrigation cycles. A couple other considerations. Um, on this particular property, we're in the foothills. We have a very sandy, I believe 66% sand in the soil um, on this uh, property. So I do have to water um, more frequently than someone say in Arcadia area where there's a heavier uh, clay-based soil. Now we're at our second property where we have 100% uh, tall fescue. And as you can see behind me, we had challenges with the full sun exposure and uh, part of the day and then 100% um, shade uh, next to this tall 25 foot citrus hedge um, the other parts of the day. This area seen here in the shade gets zero sunlight pretty much um, throughout the day, um, all, part, all times of the year. Um, where this more northern exposed area, you can see the neighbor has uh, transitioned into that's Bermuda grass from its winter lawn. Uh, but you can see the, the fescue uh, does start to burn out a little bit in those full exposures. Um, so I'll give you a closer look here of what that's going to look like if you do have long hours of exposure of tall fescue. This is service day, so the grass has not been mowed in a week you can see we have about a half inch to three quarters of an inch of growth in the last week. And again, we are in June. And if we cruise over into the sunnier exposures, you can see we have some brown out. And you can see that the, that the grass really hasn't grown much since its last mow. And we're maintaining a three to three and a half inch mow height, both in the sun and in the shady uh, exposures of the tall fescue. So we overseeded this particular property last October. So it has eight months of establishment period. Um, but tall fescue is a little bit slower in, uh, both to germinate and to establish. It takes a little longer for it to start to tiller or bunch. And so filling in um, it takes a little bit of patience. Uh, you might be used to the, the perennial ryegrass where you throw seed and two weeks later you have uh, a lawn. Um, I would be patient with this particular uh, grass when seeding it and uh, expect to have a lawn in a couple months. Now if you need instant gratification and an instant lawn, contact your local sod dealers because tall fescue is available for sod. Now I would say you might have to pre-order this particular type of grass in the southwest region because it's not readily available at your garden centers. One of the things I stop doing in the summer months is fertilizing. I don't fertilize fescue after May 1st. And even if it starts getting above 105, which it's been known to do in the end of April, I stop fertilizing altogether. We don't want any nitrogen, any phosphorus in the root system, which can encourage diseases, to, uh, especially during the monsoon season. This is the fertilizer that I typically use on my tall fescue in the in the growing season from September to about April. And um, I like this because it has a quick release nitrogen source and also that iron sucrate. I make sure to get this on before the first frost or before our soil temperatures drop too low and then the iron really is hard to get to absorb um, or to be utilized by the plant. If you get uh, one to two um, full pounds of nitrogen uh, applications in before say Thanksgiving, um, before that first frost, then you should have green grass through um, when it resumes growing about the middle of February. Then I'll go ahead and apply two more applications in the springtime before uh, temperatures start to heat up in late April. Now just remember, this is a cool season grass. Uh, it's not thriving here in the summer months, it's surviving and you're going to change your cultural practices in order to keep it alive through that, that uh, warm season in order for it to continue growing in the end of September.
The key is to reduce your water when monsoon comes in and the humidity starts to climb. Any extra moisture in that thatch layer can encourage diseases like brown patch or rhizoctonia to develop. All right, welcome inside. Um, we've escaped the heat and the wind today, so I apologize for that. But to recap some of the important things that you want to consider before uh, transitioning over to tall fescue in those shaded areas, uh, the water consumption. Uh, I want to make uh, sure everybody knows that there might be a slight increase in your water bill if you do decide to go with tall fescue over some of the warm season grasses like uh, Bermuda grass, which is a very drought tolerant grass. In addition to the water, you also have to keep an eye on your cultural practices. They are different than uh, what you might be accustomed to dealing with with your ryegrass and then your Bermuda grass. You have the higher mow height and also having to keep a close eye on your watering um, through the, the warm months, especially during monsoon when the humidity is higher in our region. So overall, I'm a huge fan of tall fescue in those shade areas uh, in the southern region. Arizona um, it has its, its uh, negatives, of course, everything does, but um, if you want a green surface year round, don't want to have to mess with overseeding, and you do have dense shade, um, and you don't have direct sunlight any more than two, three hours a day in the morning or in the afternoon, tall fescue is a really great option for you. If there's a topic that you just can't find information on, please post a comment below and I'll look at doing a video on that topic. Please tell me your unique situation and I'll do some research and see if I have any answers for you. Thanks. Have a great day, guys.